So I've bought the Nissin i40 from a Fuji. Apparently it's won an award. I'm assuming that's the version that wasn't the Nikon because that came out last, I believe. So let's check it out. So inside you've got a quick manual. The flash itself looks nice and simple anyway, but you've got that if you just want a little run through. And it's also in, I guess, Japanese. There's a carabiner. Not for climbing, it says. So make sure you don't use that for climbing. It's a pretty cool addition, really. And there's the flash itself in a little pouch. There's the pouch, nice belt loop, and a smaller loop there to fit your carabiner on. Let's just do that, that should be dead simple. So, you get your loop. So, that's ready to go. I like to use the belt loop and fit it to my belt. And then it's there ready and I can just pop the top and take the flash out. So you've got the flash unit itself there and then the stand and this little section here is the diffuser. And it comes in its own little pouch you see, pretty cool. So you can just stash that away and the flash itself sits on top like that, and that closes. There's the flash. This is something I really wanted to see that no other video showed me. It can turn that way, and that way. So now when I'm shooting vertically, I can just pop it back instead of having to turn the camera upside down to achieve the same. Imagine that's forwards facing the subject. Well I like to bounce so I can bounce it straight back there. I can pop it off there. I can go extreme there. Right back if I really wanted to. I don't have to flip it over as I said to achieve what I want. So that's the first big feature that I'm really interested in. TTL, of course, is something that I'm very interested in. So TTL is down there. You've got a few different functions. Take a look at that. You've got your power settings along here too. And your compensation settings. On the side, nice and simple. Same design this side, here, that's where your batteries go, four double A's in there, which we're going to do in just a moment, and your hot shoe. There's your video lights, I'm guessing to turn on the video light you just whack it round to there and you're away. Nice little stand there, and it actually has an unlock because now that won't come out. So if you want to take it out, you can just press in there and unlock. And there it is. This is the SP800. This is a Nissan i40, of course. This is no good on your Fuji. But this is what I use on a D600. And actually, this is what's currently stopping me from using a Nissan in certain situations. Mainly just first dance, wedding sort of situations. Maybe as the system progresses to portraiture work where I normally use a CLS system. Look at the size difference, it's huge. Of course this is less powerful, but we're gonna see how it compares. Let's stick some batteries in. Ding, ding, ding. Pop that open. You've got little indicators to tell you where the battery should go, whether it should be positive or negative. Let's see if I've done that right. Let's hope these batteries are good to go. There we go. So the dials rotate nice and firmly. Of course, none of this is illuminated, so in a dark situation, when 
some cases typically you're going to want to use a flash well you can't doesn't look too shabby that's the 18mm f2 lens and the X-T1 let's fire it up let's turn this around interestingly you've only got the last few settings you haven't got well you put it about there and it drops so you've got up there so you haven't got too many degrees after that you've got a couple up right to the top and then that's one big drop down right so we've took this out of silent mode I've put it on slow rear I've got the settings for the ambient light right down and just for the sake of it I've pumped it right to f8 just to get as much ambient light as possible of course this scene is not totally representative but it's just the first test shot as you can see possibly not too well the image is very dark we'll pop that up now now I've popped the flash in TTL zero compensation and we're just going to take the shot let's try and take a picture of myself so that's what it looks like on the X-T1 that's how it looks on the X100S X100S of course is easier to take out of silent mode dial down the TTL and in this case we can change the flash to slow synchro which is my preferred use for portraits and although I'm clearly not taking a picture of somebody right now that's what I'm testing it for check out the video light we whack it round there and you can change the brightness of it with this which yeah see that pretty decent that we point it back there and that should give you a fair idea what's happening there these click so once you get used to it you'll more or less get the idea of where you're at so your manual goes from one 256th down to of course 1-1 one, one. TTL range best to start in 0 you can go all the way to plus 2 down to minus 2 so you can test with this obviously on and off with this and you're away really nice and simple forgot to mention the zoom factor 24 to 105 if that's relevant to you that should cover you pretty decent nice little flash when I shoot events such as weddings I'm only really using flash in the first dance if I have no choice and the party afterwards if I'm staying for longer as I said before I use a Nikon CLS system at the moment for portraiture work on location soft boxes off camera flash etc maybe these systems are going to take over I hope so because this is way lighter, way easier and just way cooler. Let me know what you think. Remember the head is rotatable, the flash power seems decent although we need to give it some real tests. And it looks great and it's cheap 